Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to another episode of It's All Relative. Thank you so much for joining us once again. We live in times where our expenses are incredibly high. Most of us find ourselves spending most of our income on our homes, on our cars, or on services and utilities that we need on a daily basis. As a result, we don't end up saving any substantial amounts of money towards our future or our retirement plans. I'm incredibly honored and excited to have with us Brother Ali Raza Jaffer, who is the founder of the A.R. Jaffer Professional Corporation, Chartered Professional Accountant, here with us today, who is going to give us his best advice on how to religiously save our income or parts of our income and to financially discipline ourselves towards attaining our goals for the future or even our retirement. Brother Ali Reza, thank you so much for thank being you. here with us today. Thank I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. Asant. Okay, let's get started. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about the AR Jaffer Professional Corporation. What is it that you do for your clients? So we're a small <clears throat> firm based out of Mississauga, and I've got about seven staff that currently work for me. And we work on everything from uh, bookkeeping all the way to preparing financial statements for our clients. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with personal uh, individual clients as well as uh, small to mid-sized businesses. Okay. And these services include um, preparing of business plans. Um, mm -hmm. We do cash flow forecasts. Yeah, okay. We do a lot of tax planning. And at the end of the day, the whole goal being managing your cash flows. Absolutely. Good. Now, as I was preparing for this episode, one of the things you know, that I read is that the average salary in, in Ontario, or even in Canada, I guess, is around the 50,000 mark, right? I'm, I'm hoping that's accurate. Um, so I, I guess I would assume that most people are within the 40,000 to 60,000 income level. With, with that in mind, given the high cost of living that we face today, do you think being on that salary or within that bracket, is it even possible to build any sort of wealth or substantial savings on that, on that sort of a salary? Yeah, so the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, okay. it, it involves um, building up a lot of discipline. Okay. Uh, you need to manage your finances more effectively. Um, and especially if you're in that uh, uh, average uh, forty to 60,000 range. Mm -hmm. now, keeping in mm -hmm. mind that nowadays most uh, families have dual incomes yes. within the home. Um, even if you've got one um, part-time individual, you're still looking at around a sixty to eighty thousand dollar family income. Okay, and it is doable. Um, one thing I will um, advise uh, the viewers is there's a book called The Wealthy Barber yes. by David Chilton. David Chilton, yes, and he he has been um, excellent in in providing the advice of paying yourself first. Okay. Um, so essentially what that means is you want to try and put away about ten percent of your income. Ten percent, okay. and that's for yourself for your future. Um, and essentially what that does for you is it helps build for your retirement. Okay. Being in Canada and with the aging population, the level of pension is going to significantly decrease, mm -hmm. especially for the millennial generation. Ah, okay. So saving for yourself is going to be even more important. Got it, got it. So let's dig into that a little bit more. Now, obviously for those who are within that sort of salary range, and you know, like we talked about earlier that with the increase in cost of living, there are times when you know we might find ourselves with only, say, a hundred or two hundred dollars left at the end of the month after all our expenses have been paid. Yes. And I think it's human nature to be like, I don't think that's going to get me anywhere. It's just a hundred bucks, you know. I'd rather just go and have a nice steak once a month, right? Um, do you, can you give us some tips on, on making the most of even that hundred or or two hundred bucks? The first thing is go to your financial advisor and, and do a risk assessment in terms of how much return you want and what risk tolerance that you have. Okay. Um, usually the younger you, have, the, the younger you are, mm -hmm. the more um, tolerance you have for risk, okay. meaning you can invest in, in more equities. Okay. The older you get, you want to maybe pull out and, and go into the money market and, and bond type of funds. Um, and having said that, time value of money is critical in this uh, exercise. Um, usually money doubles every seven years. Hmm. So if you think of it, if you're putting $200 a month, um, eventually that'll build up to a substantial amount in the future. Okay, good. Um, obviously, you know, you, you touched on the whole millennials thing. And, you know, we, we live in a world where we're surrounded with a buy, buy, buy mentality. You know, there's all these things that are thrown at us on, on a daily basis, whether it's 
new gadgets or new phones or material possessions. You know, now, obviously, at the time of purchasing them or when we get attracted to them, we don't necessarily think about the impact they would have on our financial health. Yes. You know, is this something you come across? Is this something you talk about with your clients and advise them on these material possessions that we seem to be uh, glued towards or, or moving towards? To Abs- buy? Yeah. Absolutely. So basically, mm-hmm. by setting together um, a cash flow plan, what you're doing is you're essentially looking at every line item in your um, budget, and then you've got maybe an entertainment or, or a slush budget where you want to kind of uh, give yourself a reward for, right. for everything right. that you've earned. Um, but at the same time, you have to discipline yourself. Here we are in a cashless society, or we're, at least we're headed towards that. Yes. And uh, most mm-hmm. people are either buying online they're using their credit card for purchases, and uh, that can get fairly risky because um, you know the credit cards uh, are at about, about a twenty to 25 percent interest rate. Yes. So, and a lot of people are not paying down their credit card. So, mm. because we are in the world in the world of acquisition and the world of abundance, everything's available quite readily. Yeah. So yeah. people are at risk of of overextending what they are capable of paying for. So my best advice is basically live within your means and uh, discipline yourself in terms of what you're going to be purchasing. Got it. Um, <clears throat> now, debt. Now, this is something that a lot of people have to deal with or you know, at some point will deal with or however you want to look at it. And I know that it's, it, it probably deserves an episode on its own, which hopefully one day down the line we will do. Uh, but just for the sake of this discussion, um, what advice do you have for people who are looking to, um, you know, reduce their debt? Um, it, it could be obviously a, a mountain, a mountainous challenge to, to, to deal with. And sometimes, you know, you might not even entertain that discussion because of, you know, the sheer volume of it. So what's your advice for people who um, want to start paying down their debt or at least start looking at their debt? The first thing is to take an inventory of what you own and what you owe. Okay. And then with that, um, most people who are, you know, just getting into the workforce um, usually have about 40, 45 years of, of time in the workforce. Right. With that, um, what you can do is you can actually plan what you're going to have in year one, year two, and then all the way down to retirement. Mm. The key to that is you want to look at your debt, and there's good debt and there's bad debt. Okay. Good debt is what you're investing for yourself. So eventually, if you're going to buy a condo and then maybe move into a townhouse, mm. move into a, a, a detached home. What many people try to do is they try and go for the home run right off the bat and they try and go for this large home oh. where they can barely afford and then they're drowning pretty much the next eight to 10 years of their life. Right. So my advice is if you want to purchase a home, take advantage of some of the tax uh, options out there, which is the first time home buyers plan, uh, credit as well as you can dip into your RSP, um, 25000 per uh, person, mm-hmm. and start off uh, small. Okay. So start off with a small um, condo, mm-hmm. and then eventually as you build equity, then you move to the next phase of your life. Understood. Okay. Now, I, I know you briefly mentioned it, the RRSP. Now, obviously, there's a lot of options out there. You know, there's mm-hmm. the RRSP, the TFSA, uh, the RESP, there's your own mortgage that you can, I guess invest in or pay more towards or equity, as you said. Um, are there some that are better than the other? Or I know it, it's a question that depends on personal circumstances, but just off the bat, can you tell us if there's one that's better than the other? So generally, my advice on that mm-hmm. is if you're in a higher bracket, you should be maximizing your RSP every year okay. and take advantage of the deferred uh, tax growth on the, on the um, earnings and, and the actual RSP value. Okay. And at the same time, get take advantage of the full deduction that's available for tax purposes. Um, the other item is if you've maxed out on, on all of your RSPs, then you want to take advantage of if you've got some savings, then you want to look at your mortgage, you want to look at your TFSA, and you want to look at your RESP if you've got children for the education plan. Generally, if you were to ask me this question 10 years ago, we were in a world of decreasing interest rates. Mm, Now we're in a world of increasing interest rates. So you want to try and put as much money down on your mortgage. um, So that way you're paying less interest and more towards the equity on your home. Um, Having said that, the TFSA is also um, helpful in um, taking advantage of the 5,500 that's available for the TFSA per year. Um, And anything that you earn on that is... um, is basically not taxable. 
Okay. So the best advice is try and maximize your RRSP if you're in the highest bracket. Mm -hmm. Whatever you, refund you get, use those funds to split between the TFSA, RESP, and mortgage. Ah, okay, interesting. Okay. Now, um, one of the things briefly you mentioned was the dual incomes. We, we talked about it in the, in the yes. very beginning. Can you tell us a little bit more about how to make use of two incomes? Because, um, you know, sometimes what we might end up doing is say, uh, one person's salary can go towards all our bills and everything, and the other person's salary can be in our vacation fund or, or savings for a rainy day. Is that a correct approach? Do you, are there better approaches out there? Yeah, so I think that you're on the right track there, but I think um, you want to do a proper budget mm -hmm. every year. When I say every year, um, you would do it maybe during the holiday season and prepare for the, the following year's budget. And the whole idea is, let's say you've got X amount to live off of, and you've got your expenses and you save three to four hundred dollars. Then you okay. want to look at, you want to put that towards a vacation, you want to put that towards savings for a home, or you want to just put that towards your retirement. Understood. But without a budget and without a target, yeah. it'll be very difficult to plan for the future. Oh, okay, got it. Um, I know we've, we've talked about a lot of things today and you know, I'm sure there's a hundred more questions I can ask you, uh, but is there anything particularly that you might have wanted to share that we haven't talked about as far as this this um, uh, salaries ranges is concerned, where most people are in that 40 to 60 sort of bracket. Is there anything that we haven't touched on on, on guidance for them to, to start seriously considering building wealth and saving money? Yeah, I think it's about um, this number one discipline. We touched on the discipline aspect. The other is look at all of the different tax um, advantages out there. There are a number of tax credits that are out there that may or may not apply to your situation. Mm -hmm. But most importantly, if you are positive and you think positively about your situation mm. and with, you know, with the help of uh, uh, you know, the, the Lord, yeah. is, is you want to plan effectively and stay positive and not live beyond what you're capable of. And okay. if you can do that and without yeah. going too, um, too heavy on your credit card spending, yeah. uh, you should be okay. Okay, good. I want to personalize this a little bit. Um, you know, you've started your own, you, 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 you're, you have your own firm uh, where, you know, you advise your clients on, on everything financial. How, how, how did that happen? You know, were you previously employed um, in, in that sector and then decided to venture out or did, was this your first move? Yeah, so for me, um, the main reason for my switch, I was in, in the corporate world for a number of years. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to do is I wanted to have a better um, work-life balance. Right. And I actually call it life-work balance because life comes first and then work right. comes. <laughs> um, so one of my um, biggest goals was to spend more time with the family. And at the same time, you want to ensure that you're spending time with, your, with Allah. Absolutely. And, and, and the whole idea here is you want to work enough to be able to provide for your family, Absolutely. but at the same time, build for your future. So keeping that balance, I guess, is key. Absolutely. Ahsan. Um, Ali Raza, thank you so much. I appreciate the time that you've taken and you know, shared your advice with us. I really appreciate it. I'm sure our audience will appreciate it as well. If you have any questions, um, I will be putting uh, Brother Ali Raza's contact information on the screen, uh, on the bottom of the screen. So please feel free to reach out to him and ask him any questions that you may have. I'm sure he'd be more than happy to reach out to you and discuss your financial needs with you. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode and I look forward to seeing you in the next one soon, inshallah. Take care. Bye-bye.